You will never attract into your life what you vilify. You will repel what you vilify. And if you're out there and you've been vilifying money, you need to shift your relationship with money by, by this simple understanding. If you have a misaligned relationship with money, you're not going to make it. It just, if it seems like it's outside of your identity, you're not gonna make yourself do it. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was number 829, What's the Biggest Mistake Early Entrepreneurs Make? Today, for episode number 830, Money Doesn't Buy Happiness, What Does It Buy? Also, Happy Christmas Eve, if you celebrate uh, celebrate Christmas because you're listening to this on Friday. Happy holidays. Stay safe. Enjoy family and food. Awesome. Okay, so why are we doing this episode? We are doing this episode because Kevin and I have come to understand that while money doesn't guarantee happiness or guarantee fulfillment or guarantee love or guarantee success, what money is a very, very critical part of living a fulfilling life. So money does not buy happiness, but it does buy the ability to make your own schedule. It does buy the ability to have opportunities to buy new equipment or to invest in your business or to have time freedom or to travel. So money does not buy happiness, but it does buy choices. And not having money definitely is correlated with not being happy. Uh, all of us can think of a time in our life where we were really scarce and uh, Kevin recently talked about how he couldn't buy Christmas presents several years in a row on this really challenging entrepreneurial roller coaster. And now we're doing very, very well in business and we now understand that I think the this idea that money doesn't buy happiness is, is just short-sighted because it, it's a critical component to living a life on your own terms. Money doesn't buy happiness, but choices do, and money does buy choices. It's a la I think it's a layer deeper. You know how we do those episodes on five sayings that are jeffing you? Mm -hmm. Or five... Yeah. What was the first one we did? I don't remember the, the title. Five delusional beliefs um, that are actually, we shifted into empowering. Yeah. Leaders. I think this is one of them and I'm Same. guilty of this. I've said this before on, on interviews that I go on. What's my story? I was making six figures, but I was miserable and I was anxious and I was depressed and I was insecure. But what I don't talk about and in this moment I'm trying to bring to light is when I was making six figures, if I had the personal development set point that I have today and the fulfillment that I have in my life, my life would have been amazing. Can you explain it would have been personal a development set point for new listeners? Yeah. Your personal development set point is the level at which you have studied self-improvement. The level at which you're learning not only about yourself, but the external world. I've learned so much about myself on this journey, but I've also learned about the world and how the world works and, and business and sales and relationships. So if you took me with my personal development set point today and put me back at that version of Kevin, I would probably be pretty damn happy. And it's not because of... The money is not going to buy you happiness. It's going to buy you safety. It's going to buy you certainty. It's going to buy you choices, like Alan said. It will afford you opportunities that you don't necessarily have. But what you will find in many people's stories is when they had the most money, they also weren't focused on fulfillment. And that's, that's my story. I think that's Alan's story in a nutshell also. My goal, my intention that I set for this episode is for you to figure out what is your actual relationship with money. If you are the type of person that says money is bad and wealthy people do bad things, you're most likely not going to attract or do the correct things to attract money into your life, aka you're not going to 
raise your prices. You're not going to read books on finances. You're not going to read books on business. So my whole goal with this episode, yes, to bring to light that money doesn't buy happiness, but it does buy choices, it buys freedoms, and it buys comfort. But if you have a misaligned relationship with money, you're not going to make it. It just, if it seems like it's outside of your identity, you're not going to make yourself do it. I remember at one point in my corporate career, Kev, I was in my early 20s and I was making $12,000 checks every other week. At 24 years old, I had such low expenses and I had more money than I didn't even know what to do with all of it. And again, in hindsight and now understanding what I understand about business, I mean, for a 24-year-old, that is a lot of money because of the long-term compound effect. But for, for someone like 33, that's not necessarily that much. So it's all relative. But just understand, at a 24-year-old person, it's not like I have kids. I don't have a home. You know, I was living with my mom at the time. I wasn't paying rent. Um, and then I was living with my girlfriend. We were paying $900 rent total, so 450 each, which is nothing when you're making twenty four grand a month. And that wasn't every month because it was partially commission. I was in sales, technical product sales. But like Kevin said, and to Kevin's point, in my story, I talk about how unfulfilled I was prior to that car accident when I was making almost $200,000 a year in corporate as a sales engineer. What I don't talk about enough and what I want to set the intention now to talk about more is that the money was not the issue. That was the only thing going well. <laughs> um, and, and I don't want to say the only thing. I mean, I had tons of friends and I had you know, family and I had an, a beautiful girlfriend who really was amazing, but I was making poor choices. You know, I remember I was counting cards in blackjack. I, I would go to the casino. I, I was definitely drinking too much and too often. I had a very um, pleasure centered paradigm. And so the point of this episode is to realize that like, what, what would your life be like if you were making $12,000 biweekly or maybe 24 grand a month? Like, See, I want people to understand, like Kevin said, you're never going to chase something that you vilify. If you're out there and you think that the the people that go to the gym every day, if you kind of like subconsciously make fun of them, what are the chances you're going to go to the gym every day? You need to, we, we, we attract what we admire. We attract what we admire. I've always admired Steve Jobs. He had his faults. But because of that, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a Fortune 50 CEO, which, by the way, I would never have made the $12,000 biweekly if that wasn't my goal, because that was something along the way. And so my point here is that if I made Steve Jobs a villain, what were the chances that I was going to embody those visionary qualities of trying to change the world? You will never attract into your life what you vilify. You will repel what you vilify. And if you're out there and you've been vilifying money, you need to shift your relationship with money by, by this simple understanding. And this is the simple understanding. Your life will be better with more money if you make good choices with it. I, money's not bad. Money is a tool. Money is a tool for you to make better or worse choices with. Some person wins a million dollars in the lottery, and one person decides to reinvest that into a better home and into better charitable initiatives and into a nicer, more economical car. And maybe they start their own side business of opening a dog shelter. Kevin would, would love that example. And the other person uses it to party harder or to, you know, um, just go on vacations that are meaningless. I had one client, I'll tell the story briefly. I'll keep it anonymous. I had one client who, when he was younger, his dream was to go to uh, Thailand and to just rage. Okay, this person has since quit drinking, since quit doing drugs, and is really trying to get their life together. And I have nothing but admiration for that. But basically, back then, I said it again. I said basically, <laughs> taking people behind the curtain. We're trying not to say like, um, or basically. Basically so, is Alan's word of choice. Like is mine. I get fired up and I just hammer likes. We're trying not to use filler words. We're trying to become better speakers. Okay, so he went to Thailand and raged, partied. And we were talking about it. He's like, if I could go back, I wouldn't party. I would travel. I would I would go to new restaurants. I would enjoy myself. I would he's like, I'm so different now. 
And that goes back to kind of the personal development set point thing you're talking about. This this is proof that money is not the the issue. He back then with that money went to Thailand and partied and it was unfulfilling at the end of the day, even though he drank and partied and met people. He he said it was unfulfilling. I didn't build real relationships. I don't even remember some of it because I drank so much. Mm. Versus now, when he goes to Thailand again, he's going to make meaningful experiences. And, and it, it was the choices with money that mattered. It wasn't the money. It's And going back to my, my first point that I made, I've been thinking of this as you were talking. It's almost... Somebody says money doesn't buy happiness, and they don't go further in and say, if you're not already in alignment with your your health and your love. And that's what we're talking about. Holistically, I believe you will be happier if you have freedom and certainty. So Alan and I were crunching our business numbers today. We just crossed $300,000. So we will be making $300,000 in the next year. That's going to change, obviously, but that's where we're at. I can tell you right now with certainty that that is a lot better than when we were making $80,000 a year. But it's because we didn't say we will be happy when. We said, what are we doing in the meantime? Are we working on ourselves? Are you going to the gym? Are you having the tough conversations in your relationship? Money will solve some of your problems. It cannot solve all of them. That's what I want this frame to be. Money can solve many problems. It cannot solve all problems. One of my favorite stories, when I, before, when I lived in New Hampshire, I actually lived 10 minutes from where I live today. When we go to the pizza shop, I like, I drive by my old house, so it's, it's weird. But when I lived up there and I moved out. You were really, really fulfilled up there? Or? Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was great. When I, when I, I moved. No, I don't. What is up, you guys? My name is Gabby, and I just want to give a huge shout out to Kevin and Alan for the community that they have created and the mission that they are on over at Next Level University. Never in a million years did I think when I started listening to the Hyperconscious podcast two years ago that I would be as invested as I am today. But here we are two years later. I have done group coaching. I truly look forward to every single episode they drop, all of the things that they're teaching. And I am now doing one-on-one -on -one coaching with Alan to help level up in my business. And all I gotta say about these guys across the board is they are true, genuine souls. They mean it when they say they are heart-driven and they mean it when they say they are no BS. And I think that's probably my favorite part about them. They get rid of the fluff. They give you tactical tips and tricks to help you level up in your life, to help you make strides towards your goals. And they've created a community of like-minded people to lean on each other at every single stage of life. So guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart for the impact that you have made in my life. And I am so very excited to see the impact and the waves that you make from here on out. When I moved out of there, my landlord called me and said, Hey Kev, your trash receptacle is here. You have to walk it out to the road. And I was an hour away. I would moved an hour away. And I said, is there any way you can just walk it out to the road for me? I'm not going to drive an hour up there to to walk it out to the road. It doesn't make any sense. He's like, no, you got, you have to come do it. I called up 1-800-GUT-JUNK and I said, hey, how much is it for you guys to take my trash out? And they're like, 75 bucks. I said like, $75. And I, I said, awesome. Can you do that for me? Where do I send the money? That The fact that I was financially abundant allowed me to continue doing what I wanted to do instead of doing something else. It didn't buy happiness. I bought an opportunity. And that's the point I'm going to continue to reiterate in this. If you are working on yourself holistically, money will help that. If you're really focused on love and health, money helps health. You can get massages. You can go to the chiropractor. You can order protein. You can get organic food, all of that. And it helps love. You can go on different dates with self-love, you can go get a massage, you can, it just, it affords opportunities that you wouldn't normally have. So if you hear somebody say money doesn't buy happiness, I want you, if you're listening to this, to really think about it. It does not buy happiness. You can cultivate happiness and fulfillment within yourself, absolutely. But it does give you opportunities that you wouldn't have otherwise, and I think it's short-sighted to, to believe anything else. 
I was uh, downstairs with Emilia after my work day ended yesterday, and um, she opened up the Books for Babes GoFundMe page, and she's like, oh my God, you donated $200? And we had this beautiful moment. She's like, you're so sweet, you know, and we're both donating 200 And that bought happiness in a, in a sense. So it goes another layer deeper too because it affords you opportunities to be charitable. I was thinking about this earlier, and this is synchronistic because I didn't I I, I didn't realize that we were doing this episode today. Um, I said, um, <laughs> we got to get better. I'm sitting in my chair doing my morning routine. I call it my sacred three. I'm trying to get three hours in the morning before before I do anything else. And I'm sitting there like generosity is a luxury. We have the the all the books like out in the living room of our home, and they're awesome. They're I mean, oh my god, some of these are gorgeous. And I'm like, generosity is a luxury. I work so hard that I get to be generous. And even that is a deeper layer than like, okay, money, if you're in alignment with your highest self, will help you accelerate that alignment because you can make more positive choices, persons, places, things, and ideas. Money will also afford you the opportunity to give to causes you care about. I remember Kevin donated $100 at an event. Um, we went to Top Notch Scholars uh, graduation ceremony. And Kevin and I were broke at the time, broke entrepreneurs. If you've, you're out there and you're there, just stay in it. You got this. There is a light at the end of that tunnel if you keep getting better. Luckily, we're there. And Kevin basically took $100 out of his wallet that he doesn't really have because we were in debt at the time. And he donated it so she could go to, I believe, what college was it? I, I honestly forget. I don't remember. And let me let me go a, a layer deeper. My, I think my mom had given me that money for something. I don't know. It was winter. It might have been for Christmas. I think my mom gave me five hundred dollars cash for Christmas, and I gave a hundred of that away. Because, and honestly, you know what hurt me the most? I couldn't give more. That's what hurt me the most is I had to think about it. Can I really do this? That the, Genuinely, that bothers me. I'm, that's not the type of person that I want to be. I want to be the type of person who can give without thinking. Obviously, you can go off the rails with that, but that's the intention at least. I want to have the capability to say, 100, here's 1,000. How much is your? How much is going to cost you to go to college? 27,000? Cool. I'm going to write you a check right now. Alan probably won't support that necessarily but <laughs> no no i will i will that i absolutely will as long as it's in proportion <laughs> yeah to you know what i mean as long yeah. as it's sustainable that's all yeah. i'm saying and um, i yeah. i am a very as a human being i'm very driven by money i love money i'm a better person when i have it that doesn't mean i should stop working on myself when i'm more abundant i make better long-term decisions we just spent 12 1300 on equipment this new microphone was 300 dollars the money that's coming into our business is allowing us to perpetuate our message with higher quality to more people. And that is empowering. That's empowering. And we couldn't have done this two years ago because we didn't have $300 to spend on a microphone. We were just trying to figure out how to get clients and, and build the business. So I want to make sure that anytime you hear us talk about money and money we're making and things we're buying, I want everybody to know that we are extremely grateful and we will not lose sight of that. But we're also empathetic that you might not be there yet. And Alan said it, keep going if you're not. If, if you've villainized money in any way, shape, or form and you're an entrepreneur, it's time to break that wall down. The Illusion of Money by Kyle Cease, great book. That's a great book to work on your limiting beliefs around money for sure. For sure. And I want to clarify two things. One, when Kevin, and Kevin's the CFO now, of the business. So he is in charge of and responsible for all things money, gross revenue, you know, minimizing expenses, you know, net revenue, all of those things. Now I'm saying, you know, as filler words, the second thing I want to say is Kevin says, I'm a better man when I have money. What he's really saying is I'm a better man when I'm not scarce. Yeah. I'm a better man when I have more to give. I'm a better man when I have certainty and I'm not in fear all the time. Everyone who's already a good person is going to be more of a good person with more abundance. So, again, it's that same idea. And, and I just want to give a couple quick examples. On Audible, over the last five years, 
I've probably invested thousands of dollars into books. Emilia doesn't know this yet, so I'm, I shouldn't say it because she might be able to hear me. Uh, I have a surprise gift for her. I won't go down that road. But last year, I bought her for Christmas Audible, and I bought her a whole year subscription to Audible. Remember, money, if you choose the right things, right behind me, this bookshelf, all these books, this is probably 500 bucks worth of books. And can you imagine how much more fulfilling my life is now that I understand the art of impossible and how to be relentless and traction is a business book. And and one more example too, not only was I able to buy Emilia $180 worth of Audible for all of the first year, and now she can download all that into her consciousness, knowledge is everything. But also I bought a course, uh, Darren Hardy's course, it's called Insane Productivity. And I, I make no money on, on talking about the compound effect. I make no money on, you know, talking about his course. Best money I've ever spent to this day. Best money I've ever invested. Four ninety seven, four payments of four ninety seven. That's a two thousand dollar online course. Kev, I mean, the most valuable online content I've ever seen in my entire life, and that actually includes our content, <laughs> which is which is very hard for me to say because I think our podcast is genuinely world class, most valuable podcast on the planet, in my opinion. Yes, I'm biased. But this course was the best course I've ever taken in college, in my master's program, out of any online course. That $2,000, I was not, I would not be able to invest that money in my own personal development if it wasn't for abundance, if it wasn't for me making money. Money is not a bad thing. And if you're out there and you've allowed Hollywood or your family or scarcity to, to make you believe that money is somehow bad, you're going to have to unwire that because the truth is, that the explicit truth is that fulfillment is a formula and money is a part, a critical part of that formula. Fire. Fire. Next Level Nation, tomorrow, episode number 831. It is Strategy Saturday, three simple steps to change your behavior. As you know, we are coming up on the end of the year. If you're listening to this on Christmas Eve, there's about a week left in the year. Our fifth round of group coaching is starting January 4th. And our goal is to make 2022 the best year of your life. And if that is your goal, please join that group coaching. We're going to make you the most consistent, most fulfilled, most next level version of yourself over that group coaching. Everything you need to know is in the show notes below and on our website, nextleveluniverse.com. If you struggle with money, if you struggle with your money mindset, if you struggle with your relationship to money, this group coaching is specifically designed to make you the healthiest, wealthiest, and most in love version of yourself. We've already graduated 40 people. We hope that you will be the next group. Group five, we are only ever doing one group per quarter. So we won't be opening group coaching again until April, until April 4th. So get in, apply. It's $147 per month. It is unbelievably cheap compared to the value. Um, and I hope that you say about that group coaching what I just said about Darren Hardy's Insane Productivity course. Next Level Nation, as always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. We, uh, Alan and I both hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Like Alan said in the beginning, spend time with friends, family, yourself, eat good food, do whatever it is that you need to do to fill your cup so you can start the year strong. We love you. We appreciate you. No fans, all family. We will talk to you on the next one. Let's reach out.